welcome to Coconut Chinese. Today I would like to share one thing for Chinese learners or for all the language learners that maybe you would like to know when you learn a language. We all know that when we learn a language, a lot of times it's not just about to learn the language itself. It's also about to understand the culture. We also need to know the concept, the mindset, the cultural meanings behind the language or how and why people form their own language. For example, in Spanish, they have different particles and preposition words for males and females, right? So they indicate their different, you know, social status. And in Chinese, that difference well illustrated in the Chinese characters. For example, the character nan, uh, nan, the upper part of nan, it means farm, field in Chinese. And the bottom part of nan, the character, it means force, strength. So it means in the old days, men, they go out to the field, the farmland, to work. And for the character, ni, ni means women, females in Chinese. Ni, you know how it formed? It means a woman kneels down. A woman kneels down. So they indicate in the old days, women are inferior to men. So that means women have lower social status than men. That's how it illustrates the culture from the old times, from the character Ni. That's why it's very important for you to learn a language when you understand the cultural concepts, the cultural meanings behind the language. The way how the language works is influenced by the culture in some ways. Take Chinese and English for examples. In Chinese, how people order the words or concepts is from big to small, general to specific, collective to individual. For example, the address. So Chinese people will put the country first, then the state or the province, then the city, then the town, then the street name, then the person's name, the sender's or the receiver's name. However, in English, especially in the United States, so how they put the address order? They will put the street name first, then the town, then the city or the state, and the country. So it's very different. So in Chinese, it's the country comes first. So the bigger concept comes first, or the more general concept comes first. And then the last thing is the street name or the person's name. Because the person's name or the street name is more specific. But in English, it's totally the opposite. Such concept comes from the culture or is influenced by the culture. So in China or in Eastern countries, the country is very important than the family, than the individual. Another example comes from a song, country. So, 没有国,哪有家? No country? no home. There's also another lyrics comes from Jackie Chan's song, uh, Wherever there's a strong country, there is a good home. However, like in the Western country, or for example, in the United States, is the personal right personal freedom comes first. Those are the examples how the language is influenced by the culture. So in Chinese, big to small, general 
to specific, collective to individual. Now let's look at the sentence and compare. Let's take the names as an example. So in the United States, they will put the individual given name first. So the given name is also called the first name. And then they will put the family name last. So family name is also called last name because it comes last. However, in China, we put the family name first, which reflects the cultural point. Family comes first, and then the individual given name later, so last. So in Chinese, the names orders is the opposite to the American names. For instance, Jackie Chen. So Jackie is the given name, also the first name, because you put it first. And Chen is the last name, the family name. However, Chinese people would say Chen Jackie or Cheng Long, Cheng Long. So Cheng, the family name comes first. Another example of big to small concept of general to specific Look at the sentence in English. I get up at six in the morning. How do we say that in Chinese? So in Chinese it's as we all, and for the concept is big to small, general to specific. In Chinese it would be I morning at six o'clock get up. 我早上六点起床 Morning is a period of time. So it can be any time from 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., right? And 6 o'clock is a very specific time. So that's why we put the morning first, then 6 o'clock later. So there's one thing I hope you can take away when you think about how to form a sentence in Chinese language. So it's big to small, general to specific, collective to individual. Hi, right, that's all. If you think this video is helpful, please click like. If you enjoy my videos, or if you're interested in other topics, or if you would like to know what can be more helpful for you to learn the Chinese language, please comment below and let me know. I will see you next time. 再见!